really big on market evaluation. We are very focused on out of state investing. That has been a big thing for us. So we felt pretty comfortable exploring a market that was um, you know, many states away. We already were in Tennessee anyway, so we were fairly familiar with that market. Um, the thing for short-term rentals, my biggest thing for short-term rentals is finding established vacation markets. In the last two, three years, there's been huge shifts on regulations around um, short-term rentals rentals, specifically Airbnb. And so if you're in an established vacation market, it's far less likely that someone's going to come in and just completely change the rules because it's their in entire economy. So that's the first thing. Obviously, the Smoky Mountains is a huge market for vacations. So we knew that going in. And then once you dig down into the market, the next piece is really digging into the properties. And what does that look like? What does the occupancy rate look like the average nightly rate and so then your 25th percentile versus your 75th percentile when it comes to your revenue and so there's a couple different platforms that you can utilize to get that data because that data exists which is really helpful so air dna is incredibly helpful for getting that info but it's a little limiting in that you have to pay per market so if you're kind of exploring different markets and trying to decide you know, do I want to be in Gatlinburg or do I want to be in Sevierville, Tennessee? You have to pay per market. So it's just a little bit of upfront cost that's kind of a pain. So I recently discovered this website. It's called data.raboo.com. I can send you the info and it's free and it's all the same data that Airbnb provides. And so you're able to pull all of those numbers and just look and see what approximately a property would, how it would perform in that market. I've run the data against my own properties and it's accurate. So I feel very good about that. Yeah. That's actually um, what I was going to ask is like how close it was. Cause I, yeah. you know, and I'll, I'll let you finish first, but we'll come back to air DNA and all that, but it's interesting to hear that it was accurate. Cause that was going to be my next question. I was, I wasn't sure if it was going to be because it was free, but they are actually pulling, they're using the air, the Airbnb DNA data, the Airbnb API data to just pull that information out. So the information is accurate, which is great. Once we have those numbers, we're looking at what the approximate revenue is like, which is very helpful. It's a little bit different than long-term rentals because the numbers already kind of exist in a more specific way. What we're able to do is just look at what's the housing price? What is the down payment look like? What are we looking at for the revenue that we're going to get? And kind of rule of thumb for short-term rentals, about 50% of your revenue will be profit. So it's a fairly easy formula to work through when it comes to short-term rentals. But I think the biggest cost that is often overlooked when it comes to purchasing a short-term rental is actually just the startup, you know, furnishing. You have to fill the entire kitchen with kitchenware and it's like buying a, it's like buying your own house. So that's something that I think a lot of people forget. They're like, oh, the down payment, now I'm good. And it's like, no, it's another 15 grand to really get up and running. Yeah, that's actually super helpful. And a good tip is like, you know, I've been personally looking at vacation rentals for a long time, never pulled the trigger because it just never really quite made sense. But some of them I've seen are like already furnished. So I'm like, that is actually yes. like, yeah, somewhere between 15, $20,000 bonus, if it's furnished well.